it is time for you to build your own MCP server. MCP servers are all over the internet. Everybody's building their own. And maybe you think about, mm, maybe I should implement my own too, like I did. And so here we are. I'm going to teach you how to build an MCP server. And then hopefully you can apply that to your own use case. Uh, my idea is to create a series of videos that we are going to be implementing uh, features step by step together. And so this is the first one. And also it does has an accompanying blog post. So in case you want to dive into every little detail from this code that I'm going to show you how to build uh, in this video, we have the blog post linked somewhere in here, maybe in the description uh, for you to follow along. But long story short, we are going to build an MCP server with Python. And this MCP server is going to make searches on a blog and is also going to return the content of a given blog post within a uh, cloud. So that's what we are going to do. Uh, I do that search every single time that I'm writing content or very often when I'm writing code to search for things that I wrote myself uh, and I need to remember because my memory is not the best ones. And so I write it on the blog and then I know that I can find it if I need it at a later date, especially when I run commons, you know, once every seven years, those are specific ones, I tend to have them noted into my quote unquote knowledge base. base. And so we are going to be using the SDKs from MCP itself. It has a bunch of SDKs. I chose Python. Python is my favorite language, but it also has TypeScript, Go, and so on. So you get to pick which one you want, especially, ah, and by the way, if you build your own MCP server and you pick a different stack than I do, send me a link. I'd love to check it out. Maybe I'll learn a new language. Who knows? And we are also going to use SERP API. It makes it easy for you to perform uh, Google searches. Uh, for example, here, I often do this type of search where we have site and then the, the domain and whatever the query I'm looking for. And so SERP API does have a free tier that you can use. And so it can be really helpful uh, for you to perform Google searches. And the code that we are going to use is within this repo. I'm also going to link that into the description of the video. And we are going to start our code, our coding session with the main branch where it has all of the code already. But if you want to start from scratch and follow along, use the base app branch so that you can, you know, build the code as we are following along. So let's get started. Uh, I'm going to switch over to VS Code. I already cloned this repo. I already created the config file. All of these steps are outlined in the blog post and also in the readme of the project. So it tells you all of the architecture. But sim put it simply, uh, we have the uh, SRC uh, folder, which has the config.py, which is going to read all of the configurations from the .config and the server.py where all our code for the server and the tools we're going to implement live. So for MCP servers, you could implement either resources to read files if you had the file being served within where the server is being served, or you could use tools. Because this MCP server is running locally and the blog that I want to search is on a cloud somewhere, I'm going to be using tools. So tools allows us to perform actions. And in this case, we're going to use two tools, one tool for searching and another one for retrieving the content. So let's dive in. So to start things, you're going to install all of the applications. You can run, uh, once you clone this repo, you can run uh, UV sync and is going to create all of the environments that you need, create the packages that you need. I already had this set up, so it's not going to download anything new, but basically it is going to make it available for you, all of the packages that you need that are listed within this uh, project file for this repo. And to create your server, you start with this the fastmcp class and pass the server name. The server name is also in the config file. I'm not going to show you my specific config file because I do have an API key there and I don't want to make it available to you on the internet because, you know, security first. And then you can also pass the blog URL. Now, one very important note for the code for this server, your blog needs to have an LLM.txt file. And we're going to see why in just a second. 
but basically you're going to pass the API key and the blog URL to be used within the tools. And speaking of tools, if you have come from an, what is the name? Web server, well, web development, thank you. Web development uh, background, you already used to creating instances like this for Fast API and Flask, and then uh, defining the functions for each of the endpoints of your application. The MCP server is going to be much like this one. So for tools, we are going to use the tool decorator and to tell the MCP server that that tool exists. And then we define the function, say what we want to receive in the function and what we are returning. And also, we always want to give doc strings for our functions because those doc strings will be super helpful for the LLM to understand what the tool does. Uh, so keep that in mind, write good documentation, very important. And then this first tool that we are doing is the get post content is going to retrieve the content from a, a, a post. The other tool that we are going to have is the tool for searching posts. Let's say you don't know what is the post title. You can pass along the blog based URL that is going to come from the config. Uh, for this type of search on Google search, you want to remove the HTTPS you know, columns, slash, slash, all of those good things, and then pass the query, which will be the topic that you're looking for. And then Google search is from the SERP API package for Python, and you pass along the API key for SERP API. And that will make the information available to SERP API. And when you make the request, uh, well, when you perform the search, you're going to get the results of that search within uh, this search object here that we are creating. And then you can check if it was successful and or not, and then deal with it accordingly. So if you never use SERP API, let me show it to you. Uh, and when you perform the search queries like this one, uh, I don't know if you noticed this earlier, but I'm going to zoom in a little bit. You have a dictionary or what we call a JSON object as the result. For Pythonistas, they look very much like a dictionary and search uh, provides you a way to get that information in a dictionary format. So you have the search metadata parameters and information and the thing that we care about, which is the results for the search. So for example, here we can have position one, we have maybe 10 blog posts or 10 pages that touch on that type of content that we found through that search. Great. Now going back to the code, um, we are going to check if it is a successful uh, search. And if it is a successful search, we're going to use the organic results to list out what we found. If it is not successful, we say we didn't find anything matching that query, great. And then we need to tell how to run, actually make our server runnable. So we need to tell which transport layer to use. So we can use STDIO, which is the standard input and output uh, transport layer, or if this were deployed to the cloud and we are going to use HTTPS for making those requests. So in this case, it's running locally. We can just use STDIO, uh, which is the standard one. And then going back to the post content, let's say we found the post we want to talk about, uh, we are going to have the documentation here. So it's got the full content of a blog post by the title. And so we pass along the title of the blog post, and this is going to retrieve the LLMTXT from the website. If you are looking for, if your blog doesn't have a LLMTXT, you can use mine, uh, or go into the LLMTXT.org. Uh, they have a directory of all of the websites and blogs that have LLMTXT that you can use. So, you know, make it a little bit easier for you. And then we are going to use requests and retrieve the information from the LMTXT and process it a little bit to find the information we want. This LMCXT for this blog has more than one section and we want to find the post sections because that's the part that interests us. All of the other information I don't care about. And then we grab the URL for the raw content file because LLMs do prefer markdown file as opposed to a rendered HTML. Uh, so an HTML file will have much more information than the text itself, and it is more expensive and harder for the LLM to interpret and what they should keep, what they should maintain. So whenever you can pass markdown or pure text for the LLM as opposed to code, 
uh, your results will be a little bit better. So that's why we are using an LLM CXC. I just noticed here that it's a typo. And then we process that uh, information and we raise four status in case, you know, the request was uh, not successful. Now, there are two things that you can do. We can use the model context protocol inspector to figure out if we made the code properly, which is what I'm going to do now to show you just because I think it's a very interesting way to look at it. So the way to do it is using NPX and then passing the model context protocol inspector and then the command to run your server. And then if you run this, it magically will open up a tab in my browser with the MCP inspector, very good. And you can see, for example, the transport type, the command and so on. You can connect to your uh, server. And if I had resources, this is where I would find them, but we only have tools. So let's go to tools, which is this tab here. And then we can list tools and you can see all of the tools here, including the documentation for a given tool. So keep that in mind, documentation is important. I'm a very big fan of documentation uh, and make sure that your tools do have documentation. So it makes it, it makes it easier for the LLMs from whichever application you're running that you're using for MCPs to understand what your tool does. That can be the difference between the LLM picking the right tool or not. And so we could run the tool here, but I would rather have it on inside cloud what do you think? I think it's a fantastic idea. So the way to install it on cloud, I'm going to stop this inspector for now, is using the MCP CLI that we already installed when we did the UV sync. So what we can do to actually install it is use the UV run MCP install command, pass the path for the server, and whichever uh, libraries that we need to pass along with our server. So by default, it's going to use the MCP CLI uh, as the configuration within cloud, but because we are using the SERP API to make requests, we also need to pass that one along with the comments. So once we run this, it's going to create the configuration for you within cloud kind of fantastic because I don't have to configure it myself. And it's going to show you information on here and successfully installed the blog search server in cloud app. And then we can move on to cloud. And I already have cloud open. If I could switch applications, <laughs> that would be great. Um, I already have cloud open. I'm going to quit it and it's not here anymore. And then open cloud. So when you open cloud for the first time after installing an MCP server, if you haven't done that yet, this is the first time. The good sign is that I didn't have a pop-up on the top right corner that says something went wrong. That's a great sign. The other one that you can do is open the settings uh, and then go into the developer portion of the settings. And then you can see your local MCP server. So I'm already running the odd zero one because I use it for development. And by the way, I love it. And then this is the one that we just built. And you can see here that it has a comment and the path for where my UV installation is. And it has all of the documents, both the Google search results package for the SERP API and also the MCP CLI. And then MCP run and where the code for the server actually is. So now let's start a new chat. And then here, hi, let's talk about it. Let's search for the MCP. Let's see if we can get the same results that we did before uh, when we were using the Super API website. And so uh, can you find, I always say please and thank you to AI. If you know, you know. And so what Cloud does is identifies which tool to use and from which MCP server. And then it shows me how it wants to run the query for MCP for that tool. So basically which parameters is passing onto the tool. Always a good measure to actually check this, make sure that the things that are going through are the actual things that you want it to go through. You know, uh, it is a 
good precaution. And then I always allow it only once. Um, it can be boring after a few times running these applications, but it is also a good measure of security. And it's going to tell me, for example, I found several blog posts related to MCP. Oh, look at me. I'm writing about a lot about blog, uh, a lot about MCPs. And it shows me one, this seems to be my primary one, but there are all the ones. And so it, as you can tell, it didn't show me all of them. One the question that I could ask is like, how many blog posts do I have on MCP? I can see that this post is mentioned or referenced in several other blog posts in your blog as well. Yeah, great. So I'm doing a good job at linking back to my own content. And then can you tell me what this blog post is about? And so it's going to tell me that you want to run the other blog post content tool that we have and then pass along the title for the blog post, which is the expectation that we have. I'm going to allow it once. And once it does, it tells me what it is about. And I don't even have to read all of it. For example, one thing that I could do is ask more information about this blog post without necessarily reading the full blog post. The other tip that I have for you is that the same way that I configured this on Claude, you can also configure your own MCP server on VS Code. Thank you so much for joining me and let me know which features would you like to see within the server once we get along developing it. Also, if you have any questions, I'm going to drop all of the links in the description for the code, for the blog post, everything. I'd love to know your thoughts. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.